So, Titanic is unquestionably one of the most popular and beloved movies, and say it with me kids, it's of all, all time. time! An almost impossibly epic triumph from writer-director James Cameron, who battled a spiralling budget, brutal shooting schedule, and negative pre-release press to deliver a Best Picture winning box office Goliath. And you think, with this many eyes on the project, that you know everything about this epic, right? Well, apparently there's a few things that snuck under the radar that we're here to talk about today. As I'm Jules, this is what Culture.com, and these are 20 things you somehow missed in Titanic. Number 20. Gloria Stewart wore makeup to look older. Hollywood legend Gloria Stewart gave a terrific Oscar-nominated performance in the film as the present-day 100-year-old version of Rose. And while most audiences would assume that Stewart simply walked on set and performed her role, she actually had to undergo a considerable makeup job first. At the time of shooting, Stewart was in fact 87 years of age, and so makeup was applied to her face to make her look over a decade older, with her hair also being coloured white. It's an extremely impressive and seamless effect, yet perhaps maybe too subtle for its own good the awards were concerned, as Best Makeup and Hairstyling is just one of Titanic's three Oscar nominations that it also didn't win. Somewhat poignantly, Stewart passed away in 2010 at the age of 100, the very same age that she played Rose as. Number 19. CGI was used to replace the stunt doubles. As much as Titanic remains a jaw-dropping marvel of visual effects wizardry, there are a few moments where the seams are definitely visible. And there's one sequence in particular which might surprise viewers watching the film nowadays. When Jack and Rose are running down one of the ship's flooding hallways, pay close attention to their faces and you'll see that something is, well, more than a little off. This is because the scene was actually performed by stunt doubles, and James Cameron then employed cutting-edge VFX to basically paste DiCaprio and Winslet's faces over the top. Unfortunately, the tech wasn't quite sophisticated enough to pull this off convincingly in 1997, at least not since the film became available on Blu-ray. And so Winslet's face in particular looks more like a dodgy Snapchat filter threatening to slide its way off the real face that's underneath. Number 18. The dock scene was shot in reverse. One of the film's most spectacular scenes occurs long before the Titanic's fateful night begins, with the vessel first setting sail from Southampton Dock. But the production faced a major issue, as Cameron chose to shave millions off the film's fast ballooning budget by only building the visible starboard side half of the ship. This created a continuity error as the ship was actually docked on the wrong side, and so when it departed the smoke would be blowing in the wrong direction. But Cameron decided to solve this problem in typically meticulous fashion by just flipping the image in post production. This required Cameron to effectively film the sequence in reverse, with any visible lettering on costumes and signs and even buttons on crew members' clothing being produced backwards before then getting flipped during editing. Now that is crazy. Number 17. Jack would have actually won the poker game without drawing a card. Jack and Fabrizio's journey aboard the Titanic begins after Jack wins two third-class tickets in a poker game at the start of the movie. The way the scene plays out suggests that Jack only wins after drawing a game-winning card, yet if we take a quick look at his hand, it's clear that Jack already won regardless. We see that Sven, the person he was playing against, had two pair of eights and sixes, and Jack's was very clearly superior to that, being just one card away from a full house. It's some acceptable excess dramatization at the end of the day, yet the general public has such a poor grasp of poker anyway that it's actually quite easily missed. Number 16. James Cameron had two secret cameos. So James Cameron made two sneaky cameo appearances during this movie. The better known of the two comes during the iconic scene where Jack draws Rose nude, with Cameron serving as a drawing stand-in for DiCaprio. However, due to Cameron being left-handed, he had to flip the image during post in order to appear right-handed like DiCaprio. Compared to the whole Southampton dock fiasco, though, that was nothing. Cameron's other cameo comes earlier on in the film, and features only his voice. After the engine master says, all ahead full, Cameron can be heard shouting the very same in the background. Though Cameron doesn't appear on screen in this instance, his distinctive vocal twang is nevertheless pretty easy to notice once you're in the know. Number 15. The bow scene is slightly out of focus. Who can forget the iconic scene where Jack and Rose meet at the bow of the ship and enjoy a loving smooch? It's perhaps the single most distinctive image in the entire movie, and one that audiences were so swept up in that they didn't even realize that there was a key technical error on screen. Up until the camera pulls in close to capture the kiss, the shot is actually mildly, yet noticeably, out of focus. Rather than James Cameron getting careless though, this was a matter of necessity, as this set was actually built at a seaside location so that Cameron could capture direct sunlight. 
As a result, they had just a few minutes per day to shoot the sunset lighting that Cameron desired, and after numerous failed days of shooting, the sky suddenly cleared. Cameron then rustled the crew together, dragged Winslet out of makeup, and had the kiss shot before the clouds ruined the take. Cameron got the sunset that he wanted, even if it also resulted in a slightly blurry image. Still, it did nothing to ruin the moment or prevent Russell Carpenter from winning a Best Cinematography Oscar, so few will bring themselves to care, let alone notice. Number 14. The 1912 scenes last exactly as long as it took the Titanic to sink. Though Titanic clocks in at a mighty 195 minutes, only 160 minutes of it actually take place in 1912, with the film of course bookended by its present-day wraparound. Now, this might not seem significant at first, except the real Titanic actually took 160 minutes to sink, and while in no way intentional on Cameron's part given the film's many deleted scenes, it's still an amusingly coincidental detail regardless. It would of course be flatly incorrect to say that the 1912 portion of the movie unfolds in real time, but rather that Cameron compresses the events into a more cinematically appropriate time frame. Number 13. Jack and Rose's lovemaking car is visible earlier in the film. Now, few who watch Titanic will forget the steamy scene where Jack and Rose have sex inside a car contained within the ship's cargo hold, and those who pay close attention earlier on in the film will actually be able to spot the vehicle being loaded onto the Titanic. Just before Rose boards the ship with her mother Ruth and fiancé Cal, the distinctive red car can be seen prominently in the foreground, and yet it's easily missed if you're not at all looking for it. Number 12. A real Titanic photo is recreated So when Jack sneaks his way up to the ship's top deck, he swiftly walks past a boy playing with a spinning top next to two men. Though they might seem like nothing more than your typical movie extras, the foreground characters are actually directly inspired by a famous image taken aboard the Titanic. The real photo, shown here on screen, was actually taken three days prior to the Titanic sinking, and though the boy featured Robert Douglas Spedden did indeed survive along with his family, he sadly died barely three years later after being struck by a car. While some may complain that Cameron's recreation isn't accurate enough, it's clearly meant to be more of a cute, playful nod than a direct attempt to imitate the photo to the beat. Number 11. Louis Bodine's Watchman T-Shirt You've probably never noticed this, that treasure hunter Brock Lovett's best pal and crewmate Lewis can actually be seen wearing a rather familiar t-shirt throughout the film. With its smiley face bearing a red bullet hole, the shirt's logo bears a distinctive resemblance to the iconic similar logo of Alan Moore's beloved graphic novel Watchmen. It's impossible to say that this is definitely a direct reference, especially as the actual Watchmen logo has no bullet hole and a different kind of blood splatter pattern, but given that Lewis is clearly that kind of nerd of the crew, it also feels like he's kind of the guy that would read Watchmen. And given Cameron's clear love for superhero pulp, it was probably intentional. Number 10. James Cameron's regular Jeanette Goldstein plays the Irish mother Jeanette Goldstein has appeared in a number of James Cameron's movies, making her memorable acting debut as Private Vasquez in Aliens and then playing John Connor's foster mother, Janelle, in Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Though Goldstein only acted intermittently on screen in the years that followed, she nevertheless made a brief appearance in Titanic as the Irish immigrant mother who tragically tells a story to her two children to put them to sleep, well aware that they're immediately due to drown. It's a memorable scene for sure, yet Goldstein's appearance is so markedly different from her prior camera movies movies. No doubt aided by the period clothing that she's wearing, that you'd actually be forgiven for not noticing that it was actually her. Number 9. Jack's drawing of the one-legged sex worker is briefly visible In the movie's first act, Jack shows off his various drawings to Rose including a picture of a one-legged sex worker. Though at this point, Cameron cuts away from the page and doesn't actually show the drawing to the audience, focusing instead on Rose's shocked reaction. However, if you freeze-frame your way through the shot where Jack turns the page to his sketch of Madame Bijou, for a few quick frames, the picture of this person is actually visible. And it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect, but nevertheless proves that James Cameron did indeed draw it for real. Number 8. The film borrows a line of dialogue from Twin Peaks one of the movie's most memorable lines of dialogue occurs when Cal learns that Rose is leaving him and cruelly taunts, where are you going to go? To him? To be a whore to a gutter rat? Rose then retorts with the savage put down, I'd rather be his whore than your wife. To fans of David Lynch's Twin Peaks, the line might actually sound familiar, given that Cameron lifted it from the second season's 16th episode, which aired over six years prior, where Norma visits Hank in jail and says the very same thing. Now, before you pawn it off as a mere coincidence, this is almost certainly intentional on Cameron's part, given that Billy Zane also made his Twin Peaks debut in the very same episode. This was also the final part of a three-episode arc for Zane's Titanic co-star David Warner, who played Cal's bodyguard Spicer. 
Redditor asked Twin Peaks co-creator Mark Frost about the homage, though despite knowing Cameron personally, the subject hasn't ever come up. Number 7. Mirrors were used to make the boiler room look bigger even watching Titanic today, the scale of the movie's sets are absolutely staggering, particularly in the bowels of the ship, where we occasionally glimpse lines of workers shoveling coal into the furnaces to keep the Titanic powered. Ingeniously, though, the set isn't anywhere near as big as it looks, with Cameron actually having gigantic mirrors placed midway through the set to make it look decidedly deeper. The film's production designer, Peter Lamont, first used the trick on Cameron's prior film, Aliens, using mirrors to make some of the hypersleep chambers look more like an even dozen. Sometimes the best solutions really are the simplest and the most practical ones, but that doesn't stop it from being anything less than genius. Number 6. James Horner's score recycles elements from his Braveheart score The late, great James Horner served as Titanic's composer and also co-wrote Celine Dion's banger of a title song, My Heart Will Go On, receiving an Oscar for each. However, Horner was surprised to be invited to score Titanic given his major tensions with Cameron on Aliens, where Horner had to record the score in just four days, though nevertheless received his first Best Original Score Oscar nomination as a result. Cameron was so impressed with Horner's work on Braveheart, for which Horner received another Oscar nod, and in turn Horner decided to forgive their prior tensions and come aboard the project. Though Horner's score for the film is undeniably terrific, many have noted that some of the musical cues have clearly been lifted from his Braveheart score, especially the piece that plays just before the lookout spot the iceberg, which sounds almost identical to the cue that plays in Braveheart as one of the major battles kicks off. Now there are worse things than a little self-cribbing, and it certainly didn't prevent Titanic's score from becoming one of the best-selling albums ever. Number 5. The Irish Mother's Haunting bedtime story. Now, we've already mentioned that Jeanette Goldstein appears in this film as the Irish immigrant mother who puts her children to sleep shortly before they all drown, but the story gets even sadder than it seems on the surface. Now, we hear the end of her story, where the mother tells her sleepy kids and so they lived happily together for 300 years in the land of Tiernanog of eternal youth and beauty. Now, though this might gloss over most viewers, it's clear that the mother is trying to find a way to make sense of the fact that her beloved kids are about to be drowned. Furthermore, the land of Tiernanog is a significant city in Celtic folklore, which can only be reached by swimming underwater. Once you realize that she's not simply telling the kids a sweet story, but literally allegorizing their impending drowning death, it's even more painful to watch unfold. Number 4. Rose is floating on a door frame and not a door. By far the most controversial aspect of the movie is the debate about whether or not Jack and Rose could have both laid on top of the door and therefore survived. Mythbusters famously concluded that it could have only been done if Rose tied her life jacket to the underside of the board to keep it afloat, though this completely ignores something that most people get wrong about this scene entirely and that Rose wasn't floating on a door at all. Indeed, that hunk of wood that is commonly referred to as a door from the first class lounge, but it's actually the lounge's door frame as is made abundantly clear by observing pictures of the real time. Titanic. Now, you can argue that this is definitely a nitpick thing, and really it's just a door-sized piece of wood all the same, but given how the public discourse almost universally refers to the object as a door, it's pretty amusing that it's actually something that hangs above a door instead. Number 3. The film depicts the true story of the Baker Charles one of the sly character subplots unfolding in the movie's background is that of Chief Baker Charles, a real-life Titanic survivor who spent roughly two hours treading water yet was rescued with only minor injuries, a fact that he attributed to drinking alcohol throughout the sinking. In the film, we briefly see him earlier on taking a swig from a flask of booze, and then he reappears during the climax where he once again has a cheeky drink while riding the Titanic down into the sea with Jack and Rose. To the layperson, it seems like nothing more than an invention of Cameron's, but in fact, he was paying tribute to one of the ship's most shocking survival stories. Number 2. Rose writes air quotes like a real cowboy When Jack and Rose are fantasizing about hanging out together away from the Titanic, Jack says to her, we'll ride horses on the beach in the surf, but you have to do it like a real cowboy, no side saddle stuff. This shocks Rose, who finds the prospect of riding with one leg on each side ridiculous for a woman. Yet at the very end of the movie, when we glimpse 100-year-old Rose's nightstand, we see a picture of her horse riding just as Jack suggested. As much as the pictures show that Rose made the most of her life and Jack's sacrifice, it's easy for audiences to get caught up in the swooping emotion to miss this slightly more subtle inference. The fact that the picture has been taken in front of a roller coaster is likely to also be a reference to Jack telling her, we'll ride on the roller coaster till we throw up. And number one, the final scene shows a clock reading 2.20am, which is the time the Titanic sank. 
So the Titanic, of course, concludes with the heart stopper of a final sequence where we take one dreamlike final trip to the Titanic's grand staircase, as Jack and Rose are reunited while being applauded by everyone who died on board the ship. Because most viewers were busy wiping tears away from their faces at this point, they likely failed to notice that the staircase's clock reads 2.20 a.m., which also happens to be the time at which the Titanic sank. But don't feel bad for missing this one because, let's face it, most of us were fighting off the tears by this point. And there we go, my friends. Those were 20 things you somehow missed in Titanic. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, or Instagram, where it's the same handle, RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself with love and respect, my friend, because you deserve the best things in life and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? You're a massive ledge and I'll wait to go out there and smash your life goals today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.